Jesus, grant us grace to believe your promise that if we confess you before people, you will confess us before the Father in heaven. Amen. God's word that's before us this morning are the words of the gospel lesson from Luke chapter 9. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. He was in the full prime of his youth. A teenager. He seemed to have the world by the tail. He had a good job. He was a manager in charge of everything that his boss possessed. He was trusted with everything. Besides, he had good health. Yeah, he was away from his, separated from his family unwillingly, but everything was going well. And then came the monkey wrench into the gear system. His boss's wife had taken a shining to him. She wanted to have a relationship with him, wanted to sleep with him, but he refused. Instead of giving in to those sexual pleasures, instead of giving in to those temptations, he chose to deny himself. He chose to follow the will of his heavenly Father and not give in. He refused. He even spoke the words, how can I do this great sin and wickedness against God? Some people would have called him a loser for taking such an attitude. Why not take advantage of that situation after all? This woman wants you. Why would you deny yourself such a thing? Only a bonehead would pull such a move as to refuse that. You're a loser. That's how the world looks at things, isn't it? And then as he refused this woman's advances, she was upset. She was angry. She wouldn't take no for an answer. And then one day when all of the other servants were out of the house, the house was empty. She caught him alone. She grabbed him by the garment and said, go to bed with me. He took off, leaving his garment in her hands. She wasn't going to take rejection very kindly. She took that garment to her husband and she said, this is what your, your manager has done. This man that you trust, he wanted to rape me. And when I screamed out, I grabbed his garment and he took off. The master was upset. Understandably so. He took this young man and had him thrown in prison. Once again, wouldn't the world say, what a loser! You know, you not only rejected the, the good, so to speak, but now you're paying for it. You want us to feel sorry for you? Come on, if you had just done what was obvious, if you had just indulged yourself, you wouldn't be through going through any of this. Can you relate to some of those things? You know, a lot of times the world looks at us as being losers. But listen again to what Jesus says. He says, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Jesus takes those words and thoughts of the world and he tells you and me, be a loser for Christ. He tells us that we do that, first of all, by confessing him with our words, and finally, by following him in our life. The words that are before us in the gospel lesson today are very familiar. We're told that one time when Jesus was praying alone, uh, and the, his disciples were with him, and then Jesus uses this opportunity, being alone with his disciples, to ask them a question. He says, who do the crowds, who do the people say that I am? 
And Jesus got a whole bunch of different answers from the disciples. They said, well, some say that you're John the Baptist. Others say that you're the prophet Elijah. And still others say one of the other ancient prophets come back to life. Think about those answers that the disciples were giving. The disciples that many of the people at that time were saying about Jesus. They weren't really bad answers, were they? They were complimentary. They were recognizing Jesus as something special. A great teacher. John the Baptist, one of the Lord's servants. But is that really who Jesus was? How often don't we hear the world and people around us saying things like that about Jesus today? A great teacher. A man who gave us a wonderful example to follow. A man who taught about love. A man who will hear that people say he teaches about acceptance and forgiveness. And yes, those are all true things. But is that really all? Everything about Jesus? Is that really completely accurate? There's a reason why Jesus then said to his disciples, all right, let's just clear this up. He says, who do you say that I am? And Peter, being the spokesman for the disciples, or at least the one who shot off his mouth the quickest, he says, the Christ of God. And the rest of the disciples gave their agreement, their approval. The Christ of God. That's a bit different answer than the other people around the crowds were giving, the masses of people were giving. Peter's answer was descriptive. The Christ of God, the anointed one, the Messiah, the one that God had promised that was going to come and redeem his people, the almighty God himself, the one promised from the beginning of time, when God said, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers, he will crush your head and he will strike his heel. The one promised by the prophet Isaiah, who would come and crush the devil's head, Emmanuel, God with us. This is what Peter and the disciples were confessing, confessing with their words. And it's much different, isn't it? It says that Jesus is God. Jesus isn't some figure that's just really high up on the list. But this one says Jesus is on top of the list. He is my God. He is my Savior. He's the only one that can take me or anyone to heaven. That's what Jesus is talking about when he says, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Confessing him with our words. That's hard to do in a world like this today, isn't it? Because if you and I say, Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is God, Jesus is the only Savior of the world, there's lots of things that get thrown at us. Lots of insults. Bigoted. Closed-minded unloving hate speech. After all, we're all worshiping the same God. No, Jesus is the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's tough to confess those things in this world. It makes me think about parents who send their kids, send their child out to college, to a very, very liberal college. And the parents were worried about the persecution that their son would take for being a Christian. And when he came home for the first uh, vacation at Thanksgiving, the parents said, how did it go? How much grief did you take for being a Christian in the classroom and, and, and your activities? And he said, don't worry, Mom and Dad. No one knows I'm a Christian. That's not what Jesus is talking about in our life, in our relationship with him. He tells us to confess him with our words, to confess him with our actions, to talk about him, knowing 
that yes, there might be some, some opposition. There might be some grief that comes with it. That's what the Lord says, is talking about when he says that we are to daily take up our cross and follow him. That's what it means to follow Jesus with our life, being a loser for him. Listen again to the words of Jesus. He says, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and experts in the law. He must be killed and be raised on the third day. Jesus said to all of them, if anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. As we confess Jesus with our words, it starts out with denying yourself. What does Jesus mean by denying yourself? You know, he's not talking about giving up rich foods, chocolate, things like that. He's not talking about denying ourselves from part, denying uh, particular activities or things like giving up fish on Friday or, or, or anything like that. Denying oneself goes a lot deeper than that. Denying ourself, our sinful nature, okay? And you know something? That is something that's impossible to do, but the Lord did it for us first. When we were brought to the font, water was poured on our heads and God's powerful word was spoken. Faith was put in our hearts and that sinful self was held under the waters of baptism. When we deny ourselves, it means to deny our sinful nature. As we confess our sins to our Lord and leave them at his feet, and as we seek to follow his will with a changed heart, a heart changed by the gospel, by the forgiveness of sins in Christ, and to live the life that he has called us to, not the life that the devil in this simple world calls us to. That's what it means to deny ourselves. And then Jesus says this, take up his cross, take up our cross daily. Jesus took up his cross. He took up that cross on Calvary where he suffered the punishment for our sins, the sins of the whole world, the hell for the sins of the whole world. He took that up and he was the only one who could take up that cross. But when Jesus tells us to take up, take up our cross, he says to expect opposition, to expect ridicule, to expect being mocked for believing what our Lord has told us, that he is our savior, that he forgives our sins. People like to say, you're so naive to think that somebody dying on a cross could take away your sins. You're so naive to think that a God uh, requires perfection to get to heaven and that he's going to punish people for doing wrong and punish people for unbelief. You're an idiot for thinking that if there is a God in heaven that you can't get there by something that you do. Or you're an idiot, you're a hater for saying that Jesus is the only way to heaven. These are the things that we're to expect. They're part of taking up the cross daily. That's a word that's so easily passed over. Take up your cross daily. My sinful nature says, I don't want to take it up at all, much less daily. Or maybe I'll take it once in a while. But Jesus says this is something daily. Just as we daily drown the old Adam, the old sinful nature, the old self, through sorrow and repentance, remembering our baptisms and what Jesus did for us when he brought us to faith and to follow him. The only way that this can be done, brothers and sisters, the only way that we can be a loser for Christ is to cling to him, remembering our baptisms, faithfully hearing God's word taught and preached, faithfully hearing his word every day as we read scripture, read devotions, as we come to the Lord's table to receive his body and blood in with and under that bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins, the strengthening of our faith and life and salvation. This is the only way it can be done. 
Jesus tells us, whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever wants to lose, whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. May we cling to our Lord, cling to what he has done, because without that, we're nothing. Without that, we're lost. Without that, we might be considered a winner by the way the world looks at things. But we're not. Be a loser for Christ. As you confess your words, as you confess what he has done and how you live. May we do that to God's glory and only with his help through Christ. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.